Hey, you're listening to As Not Seen on TV. Like what you hear? Leave us a review. We love the feedback. Thanks. On last week's episode, you met Lali Labuco, a man who's dedicated his life to saving Mingi children, condemned to a brutal death by their own families and tribe who believe they're cursed. In this week's episode, we're headed to the Kara tribe village, located not just off the beaten path, but off the grid, so Lali can negotiate again with the elders in chief and hopefully rescue more Mingi children. So why are we here? What are we going to see? Uh, so we're going to, to the village, and last week we lost six children were killed. So right now we're trying to negotiate with elders for the new coming Mingi children. Yeah, that's our we are on the way. But before we take you with us to the village, we should fill you in on what actually goes on there. Warning, it's heartbreaking. Lolly, what is Mingi? Describe Mingi for people so they know. The, the word Mingi is, it's curse, it means uh, some children born without blessing. So just so people understand, it, in the tribes, they believe that if a baby is born and by the time their teeth start to come in, if the child's teeth start to come in from the top first yeah. and not the bottom, then that is a sign that the baby is cursed, the child is yeah. cursed and, and should be killed because if they don't, then the tribe believes that the tribe will be disease and, and hunger and, and bad weather. And then you mentioned before that if, if a woman gives birth, but she wasn't married, or also if, if a husband and wife who are married give birth, but don't have the blessing of the king of the tribe in advance, then, then the baby is considered cursed and also killed as Mingi. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Um, if the girl is pregnant before the marriage, if that pregnancy, if the people see the girl is pregnant before the marriage, they consider that's Mingi. So they wait for nine months. If she gives a birth, the day she gives a birth, they, they let the child to be killed. Even married women, like women, Mingi, means when the married women, when they, don't have, when they want to have a baby, they have to ask first, they have to go to the kings and elders to give them permission. And then they have to receive three times of blessing from almost maybe the blessing will take for three months. Each month, you have to go to the king and ask the king to bless you in order to get the child. So if you miss one blessing, they consider that pregnancy also mingi. So the, the mother will wait for nine months. When she gives a birth, the child will be killed. And not the mother. Um, thankfully, not the mother not as well. Not the mother, okay. only the child. When, when they do the killing of the child, the mother goes to the Mingi gate. It's called the Mingi gate. Mingi gate. means there is a, the gate that built by... Uh, stick by wood. So they go to the Mingi gate in each village and then she will change her dress. If she has uh, the old skin, she will remove and she will put the new dress. Means the old dress she has when she gives the birth, that the blood, everything touch, that means that's a curse. So she's renewing herself. She's cleansing cleansing herself that from the sea, and then she will be clean. So we're on our way to the villages, and we learned that six more Mingi children were killed just last week. It's really a sickening feeling, knowing that perfectly healthy children died in a brutal way, and all because of a fake ancient curse still believed by certain tribes. We didn't really know what we were walking into, but it's safe to say we could tell we would not be finding an Uber or a Lyft anytime soon if things went badly. So the village we're going to right now, six children were killed in the last week? Yes. Mingi children? Yes. So six children were killed. So we're trying to negotiate with elders in the future 
to rescue more children in the in the tribe. Reaching the village was literally like stepping into a lost world, a place that surely could not exist anymore, but it very much did. A place where the very concept of time does not exist unless measured by frequency of rains or full moons, and where warriors mark their bodies to signify they've actually killed others in battle on behalf of the village. And yes, where babies and young children are either very much loved or very much killed based on which way their teeth grow in, among other things. So the first order of business upon arriving at the village is to introduce ourselves with the help of our translator. People in America who also care about Ethiopia and have been helping over the years. So we've been back to Ethiopia in different parts of the country a lot, doing different things to help people. After the introduction, we would learn if we were granted permission or the chief's blessing allowing us to stay. Now, considering most of the men carried rifles and machetes, yeah, thankfully the chief gave us his blessing and did invite us to stay. Dr. Moody spent some time with the villagers assessing some of their most obvious health issues, such as their eyes and their teeth, and Lali worked his diplomatic skills negotiating with the elders on behalf of the Mingi children currently still in the village. On our way back from the village, Lolly told us he made good progress that day on behalf of the Mingi children. In addition to having an immeasurable heart, the man has a level of patience and calmness that has certainly played a role in his 50-plus prior successful negotiations and rescues. But I, I still needed to know, what does someone possibly say to the elders in chief when trying to win the release of a cursed child? So, so I, I told them many times, I said, let me be a river, let me be a bush, let me be a cliff. Means they left in the bush. I said, instead of lefting in the bush, why don't you think I am a bush? Let me be a river, let me be I am a bush, I am a river. So why don't you put all the curse to me? Because I know that I will be a blessing. So God will turn the curse to blessing. So that was our negotiation because the tribes believe if you do the rescue, the curse will come back. I said, no, believe me, I will take the curse, but nothing is coming to you because they believe, they believe the evil spirit will be angry. It will come back and kill the family. I said, no, I guarantee you, I believe the curse will come to me, but I will turn the curse to blessing in the power of God. Lali asked to take on the children's curse because, after all, one tribe's curse is another man's blessing 50 times over. Which brings us to our next stop, where Lali is building an even bigger, brand new home for all of his beautiful blessings to live together. So we are here at the children's home. It's a very new children's home and it's under construction. So you see three different blocks. So we're building for the 50 children but our plan is to add more kids to up to 80 and uh, we showed them the the kids will get in here in six weeks so our plan is to give these children the best shelter the best place to sleep to study this is a laundry place so this uh, is going to hold four mamas each mamas will wash and then the water goes this uh, uh, pit here. So this is a laundry place because we have so many kids. Every day there is a dirty clothes. So this is a laundry area. And just to fill you in on what a mama is, well, it's exactly what it sounds like. Full-time mamas that live with the children, loving on them and caring for them just like their own. Yeah, so this is a cement uh, bed, uh, concrete bed. And just to be, you know, safe for the children, strong, and, and then painting, maybe something to write on the wall. It will be beautiful next week. You know, some decoration, place to put uh, children clothes, you know, everything. Well, one of the things, and then we're going to talk about how people can help your children at OMO and, and even from help you in the fight to stop Mingi and you are making great progress as you said but as we were driving and driving and approaching the village uh, where you took us 
uh, to meet with the tribal elders and the village chief and, and to speak about Mingi. And, you know, a couple of things is, is one is that it's really important to be clear. And I know that you speak about this a lot, but, you know, the, the tribe and the villagers, it's important people distinguish and understand that, yes, what's happening is horrific by any imagination. There's no way around that. But these are not cold-blooded baby killers at heart. These are people in the villages and tribes who are essentially cut off from all civilization. They really don't have any aid or access from, from the Ethiopian government for the most part. They don't tell time. They don't uh, have education. They don't have basic sanitation. So really, you know, they're following age-old customs that they believe that killing one baby may save 60,000 villagers from disease. Disease. And it's important that people know that because the intent is, even though backwards as it obviously is to us, is preserving more human life, unfortunately, through this horrific act, which, of course, does not prevent a curse in any way, shape and form. But it's important to point that out. And I know that's important for you to make sure that people are clear on that, that this is not about having hatred and anger towards the tribes, because that's the last thing that is going to help solve this problem, correct? Yeah, correct. So the tribes are not bad people. They are very good people. <laughs> it's just the culture which exists for many, many years. It comes from their ancestors. The problem is yeah. these people are not educated. They're not they educated. Don't have any kind of education. There is no food. There is no clean water. There is no infrastructure. Uh, people are completely isolated from the modern world. These people need school, private school. Uh, people need to be supported. Their children need to be sponsored. We need to give them clean water. We need to support them. I give you just so much credit for that. And you put your own life at risk over the years. I know that. Thank you. Thank you, Lali, how, how, think, uh, how can people help? People who are watching this, I know the children obviously need money. Right now with COVID-19, donations have probably come to a crawl, you were saying. What, what website? We'll put it up on the screen. What is the thing that people can do the most to help you and your children, number one, and your mission, so that you can finally put an end to Mingi altogether, hopefully, and God willing, in the future? Thank you for asking this. They can go to the website www.omohope.org. We, we, we will do that in any way possible, my friend. We will put the website up. We will do everything we can. I, I remember, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Lale, your name. It means, is it correct that it means expensive? Is that right? Yeah, the, the expensive, yeah. And, that is unique, expensive, expensive. And, you know, I, it's funny, but knowing you now as long as I have and, and just continuing to watch you and everything, I, I actually at first used to think that that was a funny, unusual name uh, to have someone who's, who's kind of committed to a life themselves of, of such a challenging mm -hmm. life. But really, I think it makes sense that your name is expensive because yeah. you, you, you do have a heart of gold, my friend. Did that last part come through, Lolly? We lost him again. And so we ended as we began, a lost Wi-Fi connection, wondering if my final words of praise and admiration even made it through to Lolly. But I knew it was not anyone's words or compliments that filled Lolly's heart. It was and is his 50-plus and growing blessings, all brothers and sisters now and forever. A curse, no more. 